Get on the train Before it leaves the station The truth train is coming Gonna run them down Run them down Alrighty, hello there folks We are here tonight Here I am Recording the second to last video In our countdown to Christmas The final one Will be on Tuesday night That will be Christmas Eve And that one will be Brendan it will be, it'll be just everything Brendan. Tonight, here, on the second to last night of the countdown, we're going to be talking about the Blood and the RAV4, yet again. Because, in my opinion, it also shows the inability for investigators to examine what, what, what they were seeing in, in a really a rational way because of the way the blood looks and and you guys just may, you, some of you may have seen in the past the well even the most recent video I did regarding this the blood and where I offered basically my own theory of what I think happened and how I think the blood tells the tale so I'm gonna go ahead and put those clips up now to kind of just go over that real quick here at the beginning and then we'll come on back Okay, folks, here we are. This is the uh, back, back passenger door. Um, and if you look here, you can see one drop where most likely a significant amount fell because it ran a little bit. And you can see a dark spot down here where it, you know, it was running down and dried. But you can also see a little tiny bit right over here. So that's why I think they started here to try to make drops here to look like he was actively bleeding here. And that's why they started here with the planting, I think. And then maybe inadvertently did this one. Um, I just, it's just a hunch, but you know, well, this whole, I, this whole theory is a hunch, but I feel that this theory fits what we see better than anything else that I've heard, uh, honestly. So we got this, these two. Okay, there we go. And the riot, like I said, the motivation to put it here would be to implicate that Stephen would have been here trying to help drag Teresa into the cargo area, and therefore that's why he would have left drops there, right? Okay, understood. Then when they finish up, right, they finish up with these, and they're thinking, and they're thinking they got a little bit left now, but not a lot of liquid blood because obviously maybe they, you know, did two drops and there was only a limited amount to begin with, so. What do we do now? We got, I mean, there's still some liquid blood on the bag and stuff, but there's not enough to pour out in a drip, right? So what do we do now? I know. I'll grab a Q-tip. And then we end up with this. And I will say that if you look, it looks like it started with a Q-tip and it was dark here for a second and then it started to lighten up and thin out and it becomes really really thin and then like maybe they at the end they pushed in like they pushed on the q-tip maybe and so it squeezed a little bit of blood out of the cotton so that it, it, it they managed to get a, like a darker dot there and then maybe they dipped the 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 uh, q-tip again and made this one and see where it looks like a perfectly round like, you know, like the swab was, was, you know, touched right there and then drug up and it gets very thin as it gets drug up. Right. That's what it looks like. I mean, that's what it looks like. So I'm now, you know, and because they would have needed a Q-tip at this point to get the blood out of this receptacle that they had used to hold Stephen Avery's blood. And now they're using the Q-tip to do that, right? So, what else do we have? You know, what else is there, right? We have the CD case, right? Okay, the CD case. Let's go check that out. Okay, so here we are at the CD case. And what do you notice? This tiny, tiny, tiny little smudge on there. I mean, that's it. Once again, whatever receptacle they had, whatever was left, 
whatever they, you know, they were basically just trying to scrape whatever they could out of it. This could have been done by a Q-tip too. It just could have been that there was so little blood left that that was the mark that it made because there just wasn't a whole lot of blood left because I don't believe there was, I don't believe they had a lot of Stephen Avery's blood to begin with. And I believe that also when you look at this blood, that looking at this blood also proves that, that they did not have, they had nothing near a, a, a healthy amount or a, or a, a, you know, a vast amount. They had a very, very tiny amount of Stephen's blood to do this. And I think that's what we see here in the progressions of this. It's getting gradually, gradually less and less as it goes, right? Okay, now, that brings us to the last thing. I'm not even going to bother with pictures of it. I'm not even going to, I'm just going to say it. Because you only have to say it for it for it to you know have full effect flakes who does who bleeds flakes nobody bleeds flakes there should be no flakes blood flakes so this is why i say that when the planters were done they had whatever the receptacle was i I imagine it as a little baggie of some sort, possibly a Ziploc baggie that they used maybe to store it for a little while to keep it from drying out. Um, and then maybe they, they had it down in a corner of a Ziploc baggie and they just cut that corner off when they were ready to plant. I mean, just ideas off the top of my head. But that's, that's kind of what I imagine being used, sort of. And when they were all done, and this is all they were getting out of the Q-tip at this point, right? They figured, okay, that's it. And the, the blood, whatever was left in there, um, that was drying up on the, on the inside of the baggie, essentially, was at the point of congealing and becoming dry. And they probably were able to just crinkle the baggie in their fingers. And that blood started probably to flake up and flake out and flake. And they were able to dump those flakes out of the baggie. And that's how I can imagine flakes getting there. You see? So, you know, not sure exactly. I'm not 100%, you know, sure on what the receptacle was. But, like, right now my working theory is, like I said, a, 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 like a, a Ziploc sandwich baggie that was meant to keep it fresh for a little while. And then, like I said, they probably just cut the corner off where... They had, you know, Stephen's blood had been collected and that it was then distributed from that little piece of, uh, you know, baggie. So that's my thoughts on that. Okay, so this is from the crime scene investigators photos. This is a picture of the inside of Stephen's Grand Am. And what I'm going to show you here is what Stephen left, what the way Stephen left blood in his Grand Am when he was actively bleeding from his finger. You see there's a little bit right here. Okay. This right here. That's us drop. And that is a drop. And that's all we can see in this photo. There may be some up around the ignition or whatever. But here we go. This is what we got in the crime scene photos themselves. Showing us more of Stephen Avery's blood. You know. Lots of jagged metal and stuff around that junkyard. I'm sure Stephen cut himself fairly often. I'm sure there was places around that had his blood, just like we're seeing right here. So. Okay, so there, as you can see, I, you know, find it very difficult to believe that that blood came from an active bleed. It just doesn't look that way. Especially when you see the way it is in the Grand Am. So, I mean, because the blood, the blood was a big problem for me for a long time, just like it is for a lot of people still. It's like, you know, yeah, that's Stephen's blood. How does that get there? How exactly did that get there? You know, it's kind of hard to duplicate somebody's blood. That's not something that's like something that's real easy to do. So it, it's, it is something that people find very difficult to get you know their head around honestly and but the fact of the matter is is that it doesn't look like it came from an active bleed especially when we see the way that Stephen was actively bleeding in the Grand Am and the way that the blood drops there 
in a way that's rational where he would be reaching to shift the transmission and we have bloods you know we have drops of blood uh there on that little console that the shifter is in so i mean that's where 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 something logical happened something that makes sense happened if Stephen was actively bleeding so it tells us that he was actually bleeding he actually cut himself and was bleeding in his grand dam and not probably wasn't really bleeding in the RAV4 and that's why all but one basically of the the blood spots in the RAV all of them are smudges and some one one spot that they found was flakes I mean certainly nobody bleeds flakes right and I gave my opinion of how probably maybe those flakes came about from the blood drying up in the little baggie or whatever or it might have been that they that whoever did this was using that they had collected Stephen a little bit of Stephen Avery's blood in and that it was drying up on the bag and on the inside of the bag and stuff. And so they were able to just kind of crinkle the bag and little blood flakes fell out. I mean, yeah, that's, I believe that's completely possible. Um, as far as who it might have been, well, it could have been the killer. I mean, that you can't even rule, you definitely can't rule that out because anybody who knew this area would know that if they put things near Stephen Avery, that the law enforcement in the area would go after him like a dog for a bone. Any, pretty much anybody in the area could could easily know that by knowing what they had already done to him. Especially as famous as Stephen Avery was getting on the TV, you know, there had to be people there in the area that knew he was not very well liked. You know, it's just yeah. So they knew they had to know that they could they could you know take advantage of law enforcement in the local area there of Manitowoc's bias and they and and so that's definitely that's completely on the table impossible and and not in any way really reaching yeah it could in my mind it could have been law enforcement some say they they thought they had the right man I think the ones that I think were involved with the planting wanted to save their butt. I don't believe all the officers involved were, were planting. Now, I do believe a lot of the officers involved were just willing to look the other way if they did see anything that, that, that gave them pause or question. I believe that they probably just looked past it and assumed that Stephen was guilty. Because that's what law enforcement officers tend to do. But I only think, I truly only believe a very small handful of officers were actually involved with any kind of tampering, we'll say. Um, so that's just my two cents on that. But I do believe it's possible that Colburn and or Link could have possibly reclaim some of Stephen's blood from somewhere there on the property because Stephen was cutting himself and hurting himself and bleeding somewhat often uh, on various in various places there and they had the right kind of they had the right they had what was needed to be able to reliquify blood in their evidence kits so that's something to you know keep in mind and so I'm not I wouldn't put it past those two um to be perfectly honest so it could be that um, you know it's just hard to say but the point is is that the blood doesn't look it doesn't convincingly show or, 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 or convince me of the prosecution's narrative of how it happened it actually looks very suspicious because it's mainly smudges as if somebody had a tiny amount of Stephen Avery's blood and they were trying desperately to spread it around that RAV4. So we'll get on to some of the other things that are odd, right? Well, let's talk about A23. A23 was a blood sample taken from the exterior uh, tailgate of the RAV4. 
It was kind of near the handle. Okay. It ended up being a partial profile. Okay. So it, 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 they weren't able to, it didn't come back as Stephen Avery, or at least it must have had some differences to Stephen Avery's DNA because Sherry Colhane at trial states that it wasn't Stephen Avery's. It was a partial profile, and they don't know whose it was, but it wasn't Stephen Avery. So we, so we have that, right? So it's like, well, whose was it? You know? What strange male's blood do we have on the back of the RAV4? Somewhere where somebody might be pushing the RAV4 if they were trying to get it into place. They might be behind it and pushing on it. So, like, isn't that interesting? We have, a, we have an unknown male's blood on the exterior of the RAV for tailgate, essentially. It's just, you know, little things like that. The fact that Stephen Avery's blood isn't mixed in with uh, Teresa's blood in the cargo area. I mean, the, part of their, I mean, this is their theory that Teresa managed to cut his finger and reopen it when they were fighting or whatever in the melee, right? And that Stephen was loading her into the back of the RAV4 well, and he was actively bleeding. Is there, is, I mean, this is the prosecution's theory. So he was actively bleeding while doing this. So why isn't he actively bleeding in the cargo area where he's loading her into? Instead, his blood is in other strange places that is really conspicuously odd. Yeah. So that's the issues with the blood in the RAV4. That's why I've always had an issue with the blood in the RAV4. It just does it's number one not convincing on on the face because of the way it looks and the where it is and and where it's not. Like I just said, not in the cargo area mixed in with Teresa's blood. Where he was supposedly loading her in to the to the cargo area with this bleeding finger, according to the prosecution. And the next thing I'm going to show you while we're here talking about the blood in the RAV um, and, and stuff like that, I'm going to show you something uh, that Kratz had done regarding A23 at trial. So, here we go. All right, so we start off. We see judge, um, judges, you know, overruling Kratz's <laughs> objection during Jerry Jerry's uh, closing statement. Anyways, while we're at it, while we're talking about candor with the jury, I don't know if you recall, but I I do. In the opening statements, this nice PowerPoint presentations that Mr. Kratz has prepared, and one of them puts up the picture of the tailgate. Um, um, anyway, he puts up the nice PowerPoint slide showing the rear of the vehicle like this. And he's going through where Mr. Avery's blood DNA was found on Teresa Hallback's vehicle. And he's got one of his nice slick arrows pointing right here with, with a circle. I see that and I think, my gosh, I have been working on this case for months. Did I miss that? How could I miss that the client's blood is supposedly on the back tailgate? Well, when I looked more carefully, and as we heard from Sherry Colhane, he was he was wrong. There was no blood of Mr. Avery ever found on the rear of that vehicle on the tailgate. Now Mr. Kratz is human. We all make mistakes. I have certainly made plenty here, but that's a pretty big mistake. <laughs> so, yeah, that's Kratz. That's that's Kratz. That's the kind of stuff I've done other videos where I've showed his lies. Okay, so to sum up, there is just a lot of questions around the blood in the RAV4. I've gone through many of them here tonight with you um, and, you know, put up the pictures and, and the, even the testimony in court um, or the, well, Jerry's closing argument showing him, you know, showing you what the kind of things that Kratz does and how Jerry had to expose him during trial for, for what he had done. And, you know, the, the, the blood in the RAV4, you know, the way it's, it doesn't look like it's from an active bleed. It's, it's not mixed in with Teresa's blood, which is odd if he's supposedly loading her into that cargo area. How is his blood not mixed with hers if he's actively bleeding, right? 
Um, yeah, I mean, just it goes on and on. It just doesn't make sense. Nothing lines up in a way that makes any kind of real rational sense. It's just like it's there. Somewhat inexplicably, really, it's just there. It's not, but it, it doesn't, it's not satisfying in any way in, in, in making anything more clear, you know? So that was the main focus here of today's video, obviously showing Kratz being dishonest again. As I said, the impropriety goes up and down the ladder. It's been the whole theme of these, you know, countdown till Christmas videos, showing how just at various sections of the of this process, for whatever reason, there were people making really bad and illogical decisions. And that's all I can say, is that they're making really bad and illogical decisions. Now, that's, for me, it seems clear that those types of illogical decisions are being made for a reason. And whether or not people were in the know or whether or not they were just going along with the flow you know whether they were in the know or going along with the flow hey that could be the the other little thing here like flip or slip right anyway so yeah that's 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 gonna be about it for this one today folks like i said the blood's a sticky issue because it's mainly the biggest thing that keep people from being able to believe in stephen avery they just have trouble believing that someone planted that blood. I personally am not having that much trouble uh, seeing how that blood might have been planted and could have been planted. And But it's, it's a big deal for people. And for me, it's just the fact that it so convincingly looks like it was artificially placed that that alone proves it's planted. And the fact that it's not mixed in with Teresa's blood when he was supposedly loading her into the back of there again it just doesn't make any sense so that's it for this one folks in our countdown till Christmas look forward to Brendan tomorrow night if you haven't already please hit subscribe and we'll see you